And now we're going to go on to part two, configuring clustering in Windows Server 2012. Okay, now cluster one and cluster two, these will be our uh, servers that will be involved in the cluster. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to mount that storage. So we go to Tools, iSCSI Initiator, and as you can see the service is not running. So we'll select Yes to turn on the service. And here we can set up our iSCSI Initiator. So I'll put in the target freenas.test.net. Select Quick Connect. And you can see here our three targets Quorum, Storage 0, and Storage 1. I'll connect these. Done. If we go to Discovery, you'll see that's been populated already. Favorite Targets has also been populated. And that, then we go to Volumes and Devices and do an Auto Configure. And there's our three targets all set and available to our server. Select OK. We'll go back to Server Manager, Computer Management. Close that window to give us a little bit more working space. Disk management. And now you'll see our three drives are available. Well, first we have to bring them online and then initialize them. So I'll bring all three drives online. And then right click again to initialize disk. All three are selected here. Now we need to create three simple volumes. We use some Mac space. We give them some drive letters. Call it Q for Quorum. Give it a label. And do our configuration. Finished. It'll format the drive. Drive letter Q. We'll do the same for disk two and three. So new simple volume. Next, next, we'll call this one S, and we'll call it storage zero. And we'll finish our formatting. For our last drive, again, a new simple volume. Next, we'll call this one T and storage one next and now we have our three new volumes Q, S, and T uh, Quorum, storage zero, and storage one now we want to go over to the second server that will be involved in this cluster, cluster two and we're going to start the iSCSI initiator over here and add these three drives to this computer as well. So freenas.test.net Quick connect. All targets are discovered. We'll connect them. Done. Discovery. Autofill. Favorite targets. The same. Volumes. Auto configure. There's our three devices. Select OK. Back to Server Manager. Computer Management. And you'll notice here that all three drives are already configured. We simply have to bring them online. Now here we have E, F, and G, but the drive letters have to match on both machines. So we're going to change the drive letter and path. 
quorum we'll call Q. Storage zero. We shall change to S. And storage one, we shall change to T. Now our drive letters are the same on both servers. So we have shared storage that we can use in our clustered environment. Next, we're going to install failover clustering on both servers. Next, we can select the server, cluster one. Next, we're not going to install a role. We're going to install a feature, failover clustering. Here are the different uh, management tools. We're going to add the features and select next and install. And I'll do the same thing on cluster two. Go to manage, add roles and features. Select cluster two, next, next, failover clustering. We have our administrative tools add the features, next, and install. Here you'll notice the installation has succeeded on cluster one. And it has succeeded on cluster two as well. So we'll close out And we'll go to Failover Cluster Manager. And the first thing we want to do is we want to validate our configuration. So you select Validate Configuration. Gives you a little bit of general information here. You can select not to show this page again. And then you want to select the service that will participate in the cluster. So browse. Advanced, find now. And it will add cluster one and cluster two to the selected service. Next, we can choose to run all of the tests or run only certain tests. We're going to run all of them initially. This will give you a list of the different tests. And select next. and then the validation tests will be run. All right, our validation has finished. And so we can look at our report here. And you can see we've had success in all areas that were checked in order to run this cluster. Inventory, network, storage, and system configuration all passed successfully. You can select any link on the left and that will take you to the particular location in the report that you're interested in and you can get additional information by selecting any of these hyperlinks. So these two servers are ready for Windows 2012 clustering. I'm just going to save this on the desktop just uh, so I'll have this for future reference. Okay, so we have the option here to create the cluster using the validated nodes. Select Finish. And we'll have to name our cluster. I'll call it Cluster and give it an IP address. We'll give it .175. Select Next. Before the installation completes, I want to show you a couple of things on the domain controller. Now, cluster one and cluster two are the two servers that will be involved in the cluster. And I've put them in their own OU called clusters. I'll do a refresh here and you can see cluster one and cluster two are the only servers in this particular organizational unit. Now, after we finish the installation, I want to show you a couple of different things 
and that are very important insofar as adding your roles are concerned. Here you have the option to add all eligible stars to the cluster. I'll just accept that default. Next. Now we're going to create the cluster. Once the cluster is created, this will create an object in our clusters OU with the same name, cluster. So failover cluster virtual network name account. So this account was created in the same OU where the servers are once, once the cluster has been created. And we can take a look at that here. You see the roles. We're going to add a role in a few minutes. These are the different nodes, cluster 1 and cluster 2. They're both up and online. For storage, we have our disks. These are our disks that we created in FreeNAS. Disk 1, disk 2, and disk 3. They're all up and online. Our 2 gig disk, you can see, has been selected for the quorum. And disk 1 and disk 3 are available for storage. We haven't created any pools under the networks. Both networks are up and running and you can see one is internal and the other is enabled for cluster usage. A cluster network one. These are on subnet 89 and this will be used for the heartbeat uh, between the two clustered servers. And cluster network two. This will be for storage and client access and these are on network 88. So you can right click to configure old roles, validate your clusters, or close the connection, reset recent events. You can go to properties. From here you can see the different resource types that are available, cluster permissions, etc. A lot of different information there. The summary here you can see the cluster has zero role. We're going to add a role in a moment and two nodes. The name is cluster.test.net. The current host server is clus2. A quorum type is node and disk majority. And next thing we want to do is we want to add a role for this particular cluster. So we can right click roles and configure a role. Gives you some general information here on the wizard. We'll select next. We're just going to take a generic file server here. When you select this particular role or feature, it has to be installed on all the servers that will participate in the cluster. So I'll select file server here. Next, now there's two types, file server for general use or scale out file server. Use scale out file server for something like Hyper-V or SQL server. We're just going to take a very simple installation here and select next. And we have to give it a name. We're going to call it test share and an IP address. We'll give it IP address .190 and select next and we can select the disks that we want to participate so disk 1 and disk 3 disk 1 and disk 3 I'll select them both next next and we've created our role. You can see it's pending. Now here you can see the role has failed and this goes back to what I was showing you earlier on our domain controller. So let's go back there. As I said, once the cluster is created, an object will be created in the same OU servers that comprise the cluster are located. The reason the role fails has to do with permissions. So I'm going to right click on the clusters OU, go to properties, security. I'm going to add a computer account. To the list of security principles. And the account that I want to add is cluster. The cluster account will need permissions to create computer objects in the organizational unit. So I'll select the account, 
I go to advanced and I'll edit. Here I'll select to give it permission to create computer objects in that organizational unit. So I'll select OK and OK and OK and we'll go back to our cluster. We'll restart the role and the role is up and running. Now back on the domain controller you'll see that test share is a computer object that has been created. So to reiterate the cluster computer object will need permissions to create computer objects in that organizational unit. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a file share and we'll take a quick one SMB share and select next we'll give it a name we'll call it docs next we'll take the defaults and create the share we'll go back to our domain controller another thing that I want you to notice in DNS is also it creates a resource record test share a particular role that we created as well so it's going to do a couple of things you'll get clustering test share in your active directory or OU and you'll get a resource record in DNS so let's open up Explorer and map a drive to our new share test share backslash Docs. And select the finish and there's our share on drive Y on our cluster and we will create a folder here and call it test and now we'll test our cluster by bringing down one of the nodes so let's go back to plus one We'll go to our role and we'll see the owner is Clust1. So we'll shut down Clust1 and this share should fail over to Clust2. So I'm just going to shut it down. Then we'll switch over to our second server. Clust1 is down. and the share is now running on Clust2. To verify that, I go to Explorer, Map a Network Drive, and finish and I will create a document in here I'll just call it test and save and close it And we'll go back to our domain controller. And there's our document. So you can see failover is working. We've created a document and we're able to access it even though one of our servers went offline. And that was building a cluster with Windows Server 2012 using VMware Workstation 11 and FreeNAS 9.3. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my site. Thank you.